Fatma is 27 and has seven children, with an eighth one on the way. She's Chadian, the first wife of a village chief, though her youngest child was born in the camps. Because she didn't cross an international border, Fatma and her family don't get much foreign aid, even though her village was destroyed just like the Sudanese refugees. Fatma is fiercely proud of both her nationality and her Muslim faith. She almost single-handedly keeps her extended family clothed and fed. Five times a day she sweeps the mat and lays down a rug for her husband to pray. She never complains, even when it's almost midnight and she's doing her husband's laundry by feel. That's how dark it really is. Everyone else takes advantage of the cool of night to drink a cup of tea or chat quietly or sleep. Fatma's mother is a good deal more laid back. She's done her job and is content to spend her day mixing scented wood perfumes and selling them to neighbors and friends. Though she seems more interested in visiting than making sales. Social relationships mean everything around here. It's the unmarried girls who do most of the hard work under Fatma's watchful eye. The flour is cooked, but they still have to devein the leaves to make a sauce to dip it in. Eventually, the heat gets unbearable, and everyone finds a spot in the shade. Fatma makes a point of keeping the young women in her family segregated from the men. She makes sure their hair is covered, and they're always fully dressed, especially if they leave the compound. Punishment is quick and painful. <laughs> Though apparently the rules don't apply if you're over a certain age. Inside the tent, the two-year-old has already learned to be ashamed of her own nakedness in front of a guest. Fatma has no plans to educate her daughters, who have all been circumcised. It's Fatma's job to make sure they attract good husbands and one day have children of their own. In Fatma's family, no woman is allowed to eat until the men have had their fill. Gender always trumps age. The boys learn that when they're very young. The youngest girls eat last, long after the boys are done. Today, at least, there's plenty to go around. Fatma takes every opportunity to earn money in the camp, no matter how hard the work. Six months ago, she planted a small garden and now uses it to supplement her family needs. You can see how much she misses her home village and the chance to grow her crops. But her meager harvest isn't close to enough. She has over 20 mouths to feed. She goes to market at least twice a day and watches every penny. The innards are an enormous luxury and usually reserved for men. And cooked meat is out of the question not even for special occasions. 
You barely notice that she carries a baby on her back the entire time. Unlike Nora, Fatma wants to go back to her village, even though life is easier in the camps. Fatma does not want handouts. She just wants the chance to plant her crops and tend her herds and build a better life for her family and herself. Unlike Al-Fadil, Fatma does not dream of leaving friends and family to go to a foreign land. And unlike Khadija, Fatma gets her strength from her traditional role within her extended family. Western television tends to portray all refugees as helpless victims. Fatma is nothing of the sort. She's strong and proud and incredibly resilient. She deserves a second chance.